All right, welcome everyone to our uh, second on tap series today. I am extremely excited to talk about uh, a very interesting topic. We have some really amazing partners that have joined us today to uh, help bring some light onto web accessibility and ADA compliance. So uh, without further ado, I have on our call. So first of all, my name is Josh Grelick. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Arctic Leaf. Uh, Arctic Leaf is a, a 10, 11 year old uh, user experience design and implementation agency that focuses on mid-market to enterprise brands. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, on our call today, we have um, Evan Smith, who is a senior product marketing manager from BigCommerce. Uh, I'll let him introduce you himself in a second. And then we also have Ellie Friedman, um, who is from Accessibility, and he's our partner success and team builder. So um, Evan, why don't you take a few minutes and introduce yourself and say hello. Thank you, Froze. Hey everyone, I'm super, super excited to be here today. Um, this is uh, Evan Smith. I'm with Big Commerce. I've been with Big Commerce for about almost nine years now. Um, and we're only a 12 year old company. So I've, I've been with Big Commerce a long time, spent a lot of time in e commerce, about 14 years. Um, and, you know, I'm working uh, on our accessibility stuff that's more native to Big Commerce now. So I'm excited to talk about that um, and some different aspects of ADA and accessibility. Cool. Awesome. Uh, well, my name is Eli Friedman, and I'm basically the partner success uh, team leader here at Accessibility's uh, success department. And what I've been doing over the past decade is uh, sales and marketing roles in a number of mid-tech to high-tech companies um, and helping them, of course, succeed in all aspects, uh, all those aspects, if you will. Um, right now, heading up the success department, essentially, I help our partners find a place for accessibility within their businesses to lighten the load of making their customers' websites accessible. And uh, we're the number one accessibility company in the world right now and finalized the $28 million Series A funding. So a lot of things are going on and we're very proud to uh, uh, be a part of this initiative and doing this awesome function today with all you guys. Perfect. Thank you, Eli. First of all, congratulations on the success there. And then uh, obviously congratulations to, to Big Commerce for going public this year. So oh, yeah. uh, two really amazing companies and amazing partners <clears throat> on our call today. Um, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about accessibility um, or what is accessibility or ADA compliance. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely an important subject matter. And I kind of want to start, uh, well, first of all, actually we, we have a little housekeeping to do. Uh, it is an on tap series. So definitely get yourself some form of like beverage um, because that's an important piece uh, you guys missed the memo on that, Nicole. Come on. So, uh, but definitely <laughs> get yourself a beverage because this is supposed to be a uh, more open kind of dialogue and discussion, and just kind of laid back and and, and all of that. So, um, take a second, go get yourself a beverage, and um, we'll get started. But basically, yeah, we're going to talk about like web accessibility, why it's important, where it all kind of came from, uh, and it all kind of started. Um, sorry, it all kind of started with with Domino's and. Uh, basically, long story short, there was a, this individual who was blind and uh, had a, you know, want to order a pizza like, you know, most people do and um, had a really, really hard time checking out on their e-commerce store. And ultimately, it went all the way up to the Supreme Court um, and uh, essentially Domino's lost, the, the, uh, lost the, the lawsuit. And basically, the courts decided that because, uh, you know, your do Domino's uh, e-commerce store is an extension of their physical location. And so this really set the tone for ADA compliance, especially uh, in the e-commerce world. And it's um, especially now also with COVID, uh, with everyone pivoting and even more and more brands and more and more merchants coming online, uh, ADA compliance and web accessibility is becoming uh, a very, very hot subject matter and topic. So yeah, um, yeah. go ahead, Eddie. Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Eli. <laughs> no, Evan, you first, I insist. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, since this ruling, we've seen, you know, it's been kind of a whirlwind of, of lawsuits, um, you know, Target, um, Target the store and their online store was targeted, no pun intended, uh, for ADA compliance, uh, as well as a host of other really big brands. But what we started to see is, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that are targeting um, they've gone through all the big ones and they're kind of moving down market into more mid-market companies. And we've seen, you know, across our global client base, um, a bunch of merchants get targeted um, for not, you know, being compliant. And what we realize is that, the, you know, the rules around compliance are pretty complex. Um, and so, 
you know, we're happy that we'll talk a little bit about what big commerce has done to address that, but also partners like Accessibility and Eli have, have kind of popped up to help solve some of these gaps. Um, but we, we've seen it become hyper relevant, especially over the last probably 24 months. Um, obviously, as Josh mentioned with COVID um, and all that going on, um, I guess more and more people are starting to get targeted. So just want to add that color as well. Yeah, we, yeah we've, no. we've been seeing that happen across our merchants, um, where before, like Evan said, it was more the larger merchants, but now even mid-market and even some smaller organizations. Um, so essentially, there's lots of lawyers out there that are looking to make a, you know, a quick buck, and they just fire out cease and desist letters and all of that. Uh, and it becomes a real, you know, it becomes a headache, right? It's, instead of being able to focus on your brand, and I don't think anyone's out there trying to be malicious and not trying to support anyone with, with uh, accessibility issues. Um, it's just, it's kind of more secondary and now it's being much more brought into light um and i think this conversation is going to help kind of spearhead some of those initiatives and some of those things that you could do to really help kind of protect your brand and merchant uh as you continue to grow so uh ellie go ahead i know you wanted to you're eagerly waiting to speak so no i'm actually enjoying hearing everybody else as well um Domino's is definitely where the spiral happened but to kind of just give some a basic understanding, I don't want to go too far into it, but a basic understanding of where the law um, or affirmation, I should say, actually stemmed from. So the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, and then followed, which was a legacy law, but was continued on with uh, ADA, which is American Disabilities Act. And a lot of people associate American Disabilities Act and accessibility in general to physical accommodations when essentially um, in 1990 was still the infancy of the web, right? So they, a lot of people didn't know about it, nor was it as urgent as it is, of course, till today. It's not to say that it was any less urgent then, uh, but it wasn't as widespread that web presence or web real estate essentially needs to be accessible. Um, and so 1990, what happened was, is that there is a bunch of law firms that were basically out there. They saw a really great opportunity to make some money off of it. Um, on the same token, they were still helping the disabled community in gaining equal access because a lot of these brick and mortar stores essentially weren't moving the needle. And so where this is um, really unfruitful for a lot of people because the way that they're utilizing the legal system, um, it still is, I think, a really big part is, you know, why it's important uh, more so today um, into a widespread of people versus, you know, a very small core of people. Um, which, you know, 20% of the population, which we'll get into, it's still not a very small portion, uh, but uh, mm. we're making a lot more noise about it in this day and age. And I think that the Domino's pizza case really just skyrocketed, uh, skyrocketed the amount of concern around it and the importance around accessibility. Um, so yeah, I hope that that gave a little bit more light on what yeah. happened in its history. Yeah. Uh, good, little, good little history lesson. And uh, first of all, again, also want to say thank you to Ellie for Hopping in, he's in Israel right now, so it's like almost midnight his time. So I just want to again say thank you for for hopping on that. <clears throat> but good little history lesson. Um, so what kind of you know? So what are we, what else are we going to cover today? So why is accessibility important? Uh, when's the right time for you to look at it? Uh, definitely, you know, we encourage you to take a look at it now, especially with uh, with everything that's going on. Um, there's a difference of approach, right? So Ellie's with Accessibility, which is a, a really great widget and tool and an AI technology that really will help protect your brand. Um, and then there's also uh, what we call manual remediation or manual scanning. Um, and we're going to discuss very, you know, we'll discuss when's the right approach and, and what um, and when's the right time to do it. Um, and then we'll actually we'll talk to, about some real client success stories uh, on how big commerce and accessibility have been able to support them with their accessibility issues. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to um, to, to Evan Smith uh, from Big Commerce and talk a little about. Uh, what they've done to uh, to combat some of these uh, some of these items in the market today. Perfect. Thanks, Josh. Um, yeah, I probably should have mentioned this in the the beginning. In case of some of you that might not know who Big Commerce is, uh, we're a SaaS e-commerce platform, and um, you know, so obviously we you know we have seventy thousand plus merchants, um, you know, the U.S. and globally that are starting to be affected by this. And as we kind of Touched on it, you know, obviously the, the bigger brands with more money were being targeted and now we're seeing a lot smaller companies start to get targeted. And, um, you know, what we've done is, you know, we want to provide as much support as we can to all of our merchants. And so what we've done, you know, as of March 1st, um, you know, I'll point out that 
know, all big commerce merchants can become compliant using tools or having a third party solution do it. Um, but what we wanted to do is provide some level of base compliance. And so we'll, we'll get into more details about, about what that means. But, um, you know, as of March of this year, Cornerstone, which is kind of our core development theme in BigCommerce, when you pick uh, BigCommerce as a platform, is now WCA G 2.1 level A compliant, uh, which means a lot of things. But I think the kind of key things there are, are, are keyboard That's accessibility. That's a mouthful of like a lot of acronyms. I, I know. And so, you know, really what it means is just keyboard accessibility, timing, navigation, input modals, readability. Um, and more, but I, but I think something that's important to call out is, you know, this, this, this feels like such a negative subject, right? Like, oh, my brand's going to get, you know, attacked legally and I'm going to get in trouble and I need to provide this. But there's also a lot of benefits that are associated with this as well. Um, from an SEO perspective, Google is taking this into account as well. So just from our organic search perspective, if you're making your site compliant, it's going to help improve your SEO from... Um, also, you know, it opens you up in new markets. I think Eli mentioned, you know, the percent of the market that has some level of disability. Um, this is going to benefit your shoppers and they're using assistive devices, other technology, and give you more market penetration. Um, you know, it's going to open you up to more customers. It also allows you to tell a story about that you're, you know, you're thinking about this and you care um, and you want these types of customers to be able to buy from you. So, you know, we, we've done this, um, but I want to be very clear that because this is where people get, it gets a little hairy with ADA is, um, you know, just because we're providing this compliance out of the box doesn't mean that you're infinitely compliant. Um, you know, what, what we're doing is trying to give you as much as we can. Um, so you, when you start up, you, there's not a bunch of work to be done, but the reality of the matter is as soon as you start changing things on your site, whether it's navigation, you know, your product listings, it could be a whole host of things, you're at risk of becoming uncompliant. Um, and so that's kind of a perfect segue into kind of um, Eli coming up here um, um, about what you need to do ongoing to remain compliant, protect yourself legally, but also get the benefits I talked about. But before we get to Eli, I just wanted to touch on a client example. And I, you know, I had a bunch of them I was looking through. This is one I thought was really interesting. Um, many of you may have heard of main event. Um, you know, it's probably something that wasn't getting as much business during COVID. Um, but, you know, very interesting because it's not when you think of kind of traditional product level e-commerce, you know, main event might not be the, the business you're thinking about. But, you know, big commerce services, all kinds of e-commerce relevant businesses. And main event's a great example. So, um, you know, what they they came to us and, you know, given their type of client profile, um, having kids come you know, to main event to book you know, events and do all kinds of games and, um, and rides and all this kind of stuff, um, they really needed to make sure that they had accessibility adjustments um, on their site. And so it was, you know, wasn't even just the bases that I just went through on the last slide. They, they came to us saying, hey, we need to make sure they're seizure safe solutions, cognitive disability solutions, ADHD friendly, all kinds of things. Um, and I think that the story to tell here is that you know, Ollie was our platform able to provide that, but in partnership with Accessibility um, and Eli's team, you know, we were able to provide all these additional requirements that they they needed as a business. Um, so it's just a great story of you know maybe not someone thinking you're thinking of traditional products online that you're selling, um, and also a great story of you know how big commerce plus its partners can you know be flexible enough to adjust to account for all these types of things that are listed here, which kind of a lot of these even go outside of what's kind of minimally required for ADA. Um, so I just want to tell that story and I'll let you guys know that. You know, if, if you're thinking about big commerce, you're thinking about e-commerce in general, um, just know that, you know, it, it's it's not as daunting, as scary as you might think. Um, you know, there's experts in the field that can kind of help you guide you through this journey. So yeah. with, with that, so, I'll kind of pass it off to Eli and, and to talk a little bit deeper about Accessibility and, and the stuff they do. Yeah, well, yeah we love being partnered with you guys as well, man. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, one of the things that I will say, just a little bit of, you know, contrast here about Accessibility. So we uh, started in 2017 and the three owners and founders of our company are essentially technologists. They're also, uh, they had their, their way in a number of different startup companies as well. Um, very much interested in the web development industry. And so they started their own practice, their own firm. And what ended up happening is there was a law that passed in Israel uh, called the IS. Uh, 5568, which is basically law that requires all businesses with a web presence making over a certain dollar amount per year to actually become accessible. 
And when the guidelines came out, they can see that the cost of the solutions that are out there, so manual remediation, they, were, they cost like 20 to 40% minimally uh, more of the cost than the actual website. So for every $10,000 you spend, essentially you're spending an extra $4,000 minimally. Again, this is websites with little to no functionality. And they realized that they're between a pretty much a, a, a rock and a hard place. Now they're going to tell their new customers and their existing customers that they need to make their websites accessible under these new laws and that it would cost exorbitant um, uh, exorbitant amounts of time and of course resources that were gonna be expended there. How would they be able to justify that? So Sheer Eckerling, who was our CEO, he came in and of course they started discussing the issue. Uh, they came up with an automated solution. There were other alternatives that are out there which were falling uh, way short of the WCAG guidelines, not just by a small par, but a very large one. Um, and they realized the gap. And what they started working on was over you know, the next 18 months, they started just developing this solution, uh, which became accessible to serve you know, 20% of the population. Um, you're looking at you know, just 61 million Americans within the US that have some sort of disability that hinders their ability to access the web appropriately. And um, on a world, you know, a global scale, uh, you can see the CDC and WHO stats, you know, fact check me all day long here, uh, but you're looking at 1.3 billion people um, in the world today. And that's <clears throat> an astronomical number uh, to leave without a solution and to have equal access. So that's when Accessibility came in and uh, we wanted an AI automated solution in order to keep up with a digital uh, basically the, uh, the digital conversion, right? Especially with COVID now pushing things over and realizing that now uh, websites are not just business cards. These are actually living, breathing things that um, require their uh, attention. And just like having homeowner's insurance or retail store insurance or anything else like that, on top of all the other benefits that come along with accessibility, uh, they should make their websites accessible. And now they have a feasible way of doing so uh, that doesn't cost $15,000 average per year, right? Um, so that's the little backstory of accessibility. I hope that was informative. Um, I, I learned something more today now. You didn't, that pitch, you didn't give me that pitch when we first started talking. I, didn't, I never heard I it never either. Spoke about that, Josh. You know, I know. I'm sorry, guys. We'll talk. Uh, can we take this off afterwards? Yeah. Make it, you know. <laughs> uh, wait, real, real quick. Uh, we got a couple of questions. And before we move to, into two deeper yeah. subjects, I wanted to sure. touch on at least there's one probably for me and one for you, Eli. So the first one is. Um, is BigCommerce optimized checkout compliant as well? So the answer is yes. Um, out of the box or optimized checkout is level AA compliant. Um, but to be very clear, BigCommerce is unique in that we, from our SaaS solution, we do offer an open checkout. So it's fully customizable. So just be wary that as soon as you start customizing, you're at risk of becoming uncompliant. But standardly, you know, um, going forward, it is compliant out of the box. Um, and there's another question there for you, Eli. I think it's it's around main event and what XSCB did for them. Yeah. So for main event, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know that this was going to be used part of the presentation. I'm not aware of main event myself, but our solution, its very nature is automated through and through. So um, as soon as you install XSCB, it's one line of JavaScript code. It essentially makes your website accessible within 48 hours. Uh, that has to do with web application based elements, okay? And so with main event, just like all the other 100,000 plus customers that we have out there, we essentially abide by the WCAG guidelines. So out of the box, it should be um, that it made it accessible, of course. Um, I will, however, tell you that with AI, there is still limitations, just like you can see the Teslas, the Facebooks and Googles of the world um, that have the absolute deepest uh, pockets in the world. And of course, the best minds of the world uh, working, uh, <laughs> Uh, working rigorously in order to make sure that their systems are, are, are up to par. Um, there is definitely some limitation there that must be considered. And as we build out our solution, it's becoming better. Um, our data sets and our algorithms essentially are getting better um, as we feed them, not only from our own uh, proprietary based uh, essentially data sets and, and algorithms and things like that, but also from the customers that come along and utilize our solution. Our solution is essentially learning from that to better the process going forward. So which we'll get into a little bit more, but yes, I would say without knowing too much about mainevent.com is that uh, just like with all of our other customers, when you install Accessibility on your website for web application requirements, it definitely does abide by the WCAG 2.1 AA. Yeah, and, and I probably should have told you, Eli, I was going to put that in there. That's my fault. Okay, all good. This is the I can add, this, right? I can add some more color. Um, 
Yeah, so so those initial requirements, as you mentioned, that, that they go by, accessibility did obviously do that. There are some of the other things I listed that are a little more custom that are outside of the requirements, but main event still wanted. Um, that was some custom development that was that was done. I think that was part of the question. So just to be clear on some of those other other pieces. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's I mean, just from our context, uh, we do a lot of <clears throat> custom development work, right? So we're taking cornerstone or we're taking our willow theme or et cetera, which is built off of our cornerstone theme. And then, uh, you know, we're applying essentially a skin over, right? And um, so generally you're, you're going to be doing some form of theme development or custom theme development. And that's kind of when, you know, you can either have that manual approach where you're kind of in that initial build and we'll talk about it in a second, but, um, you know, accessibility is basically that AI tool that's going to really save your butt um, right out of the box, right? So that's, that's right. And I think Ellie, you got a, a a great story, a client story that you're going to talk about now on, on how X, uh, accessibility did a, you know, a bang out job as well. So, yeah, this is actually something that's published and it's from the pu public ad agency. It came out a few months ago. And um, as, as I mentioned before, I mean, I don't mean to tote too much because it's not really what this is about. It's really the importance of accessibility and how we actually take care of it. Uh, but if we can flex a little bit as well as we've helped a great deal of people uh, by making their websites accessible, but also, you know, curbing their, uh, curbing the settlements, if you will. Um, this specific partner store was about the public ad agency. It's a well-respected agency of ours. And they had a client who in inquired basically about accessibility. This was the first time that they actually heard about this. It was about seven years ago. And he finally understood that this was something that needed to be uh, handled because of the litigious or growing litigious climate that is uh, what it is today. Um, it was significantly less back then, but in any case, he took it upon himself and of course out of his agency to start looking into WCAG and what it is to make his customers' websites accessible uh, for all the good reasons. And what ended up happening is even through 200 manual work hours of making that website accessible, what happened was they started getting a couple larger jobs. Their in-house uh, essentially auditors and, and, and coders who dealt with web accessibility were brought on to other projects and slowly the degradation um, you know, happened over several months. And that was of course the, the perfect storm. Um, and then uh, what happened years later, which was now during COVID is all of that work that they had initially done on the website with a very small amount, let's say of upkeep, they ended up getting slapped with a lawsuit and they were slapped with a lawsuit, which ended up going to a $20,000 um, uh, settlement, if you will. And he, the agency was even about to spend, you know, 10,000 of their own dollars in order to make this uh, thing better for them and their client because they felt so bad about what had happened. And so they obviously learned their, their lesson from this. And um, what was the awesome part of the story is essentially that they came to us after they, after they found us. Um, and understood how many people we've helped out of litigation by way of our solution. And one of the biggest things is the litigation support package. So on top of the WCAG guidelines, we do offer something called a litigation support package, and it, which again has helped all those people out. And it requires a compliance audit, which is basically a professional audit by somebody who looks over your entire site to ensure the level of accessibility as it stands. And then you have two th third party reports. So uh, one from our ACE accessibility auditing tool to, again, show your level of accessibility through the automated route, and then another um, third party, and that's actually our competitor, um, who we're utilizing to cut any biases there and also show where the differences in between the level of accessibility might be. Um, and then finally is the accessibility report. So it's a master report, and this basically shows you what uh, the plaintiff specific complaints are in regards to accessibility line by line item. And then our R and D departments, um, you know, of course, rebuttal in each one of those, uh, you know, aspects showing where our solutions, in fact, making the website accessible and compliant. Um, there's a number of different things out there like hand responses and, and, uh, and email uh, templates, if you will. A lot of these Law firms, they're not going through necessarily the kosher route of doing it for the way of actually helping people with disabilities and making websites accessible, but it's just for their own monetary gain. So what they will do is they'll uh, work in tandem with people from the disabled community, sometimes not even, uh, which is funny enough, 
and they will send out through a spray and pray approach hundreds, if not thousands of demand letters um, showing the you know, plaintiff's level of in compliance. And then once they respond, essentially they'll go down that rabbit hole of trying to acquire um, you know, funds in, in any which way that they can. Um, so with way of the you know, litigation support package, we were actually able to help out this partner. Um, and again, hundreds, if not thousands of others out there um, by way of this support package and of course yeah. of our solution. So I thought that was a really cool um, story. It is published by the way, I'd be more than happy to actually send it out um, if anybody is interested or if they wanna reach back out to you, of course, Josh, yeah. um, be more than happy to, to provide that. But it's a very cool experience seeing that we can help people not only with disabilities, but also curb um, the issues of you know, our, our most litigious climate right now when it comes to uh, everything, but uh, accessibility specifically. <laughs> It, it is a bit of everything at this point, right? So, uh, so yeah. First of all, Evan, uh, Eli. First of all, thank you. Um, these are just these are just a couple of stories of of how uh, accessibility has been able to uh, support uh, merchants for both big commerce and accessibility. Um, at Arctic Leaf, you know, we look um, we have kind of the gold standard. We look for the gold standard in the industry. So, big commerce, a really really strong partner of ours from a platform perspective, gets us a lot of the way there. And then using accessibility, uh, which I think we, we kind of just stumbled on you guys too, like just kind of accidentally. And uh, I, I would say more than a handful of our merchants now are, are starting to use the product. Um, so really, really cool story. Um, appreciate that. And then kind of, you know, the last piece that we kind of dive into is, you know, so, all right. So we talked about manual remediation, you know, what are the benefits, what are the pros, the cons, why would I need to do a, you know, a manual scan or a code cleanup if, you know, accessibility is going to, you know, save the day. Um, <clears throat> so there's pros and cons. Um, some of it, you know, like like uh, Evan mentioned before, Google's starting to take this into account and factor into your SEO value. Uh, so for those brands that are really investing in SEO, um, you know, making sure that HTML is cleaned up, uh, making sure that um, you know uh, area attributes are, are implemented where appropriate. Um, and this is not a knock in any way towards accessibility. Um, it's just that with accessibility, you have the creative control to modify contrast and, and other things like that on the website. So you can kind of, <laughs> you can make a brand look pretty colorful uh, if you really wanted to. So there's there's just some pros and cons. Um, using someone like Arctic Leaf, we generally um, generally recommend, you know, at least doing at least uh, single A compliance, if not double A compliance from the onset. Uh, and that can be done in the design phase um, so we make sure that we take all those factors into account before we ever go into development. Again, we're already using a lot of uh, the Cornerstone Foundation, uh, like like Evan just mentioned that the um, the uh, the optimized checkout solution is already ADA AA compliant. Uh, so you know we just work very closely and hand in hand with more of our merchants to make sure that we're hitting the marks at all levels and and we're being able to you know spend a little more upfront time uh, on the onset to to make sure that you know they're already ADA compliance once they're you know a lot of times we're moving people from Magento or Shopify or etc over to big commerce. Um, so once we're already doing that we like to take the you know the more proactive approach and make sure that they're already accessible um, from the onset. Uh, I'm curious to kind of pick Ellie's brain a little bit and kind of where he sees, um, you know, the difference in how the remedi you know, the manual remediation and the manual scans can support in conjunction with accessibility. Because I don't know that there's one solution that fits all the boxes. Um, we generally kind of see that, you know, you know, uh, a two tiered approach or a three tiered approach can be more beneficial. So curious. I'm going to put Ellie on the spot um, and uh, see if he's got a response on that one. Can you rephrase that a little bit? <laughs> I just curious. No, no, no. I, I, I understand the core, but I, I want to know exactly. Well, I'm just what you're curious to hear your sure thoughts on, on when, when, like how a manual, even a, how a manual remediation or a manual approach can support accessibility in some fashion. Yeah. So that's a really fair question. I mean, accessibility at the end of the day is technology and where we've taken over 18 uh, months to develop the solution. And actually, with somebody who worked on the JAWS team, his name is Adi, um, he was one of the uh, core founders of the solution and, of course, developer of the solution. He's a prodigy from birth, uh, blind from birth, and also a prodigy coder that he learned um, on his own, essentially. He's worked with Apple, with JAWS, a number of other leading companies in the world in regards to accessibility. 
One of the biggest things is, of course, user experience. So enriching the experience as much as possible for all users. Accessibility is good for all users. Uh, with that being said, um, starting off at a solution, right? You can, if, if you know what MVP is, uh, minimum value product, we didn't want to come out with just an MVP. We wanted to come out with something that was significantly more robust and not to overuse the buzzword. But um, within that, we came... Uh, very close to the WCAG guidelines because I is five five six in Israel is a law and you can be um, sued big time for it and by the justice system, not just by individuals or from from the private sector, if you will. Um, and so there was a lot of weight that came along with the development of the solution. And when coming out with a solution, we went into anabolic growth mode and taking care of uh, the WCAG guidelines when it comes to web application requirements. Um, the manual remediation side of things definitely does fall short because we do not provide a solution for that while we do have, uh, of course, third party solutions for that and, you know, to complete the remediation requirements, if you will, uh, for WCAG is PDFs, multimedia and video. So clo closed captioning for videos, let's say, um, PDFs also have their own special way of becoming remediated, uh, or being remediated. And so those are things that we less, uh, tend to take care of on the solution side of things. So as far as the limitations there, I would say that the AI, of course, does have some way to go. Um, when it comes to things outside of web application-based requirements like those I just mentioned now, those definitely still need to be remediated under the WCAG guidelines. Um, and that would be best done uh, by manual accessibility work. I hope that answers that question in a very long oh, that's, way. That's, no, that's really good. And um... Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's really pros and cons for both approaches. Um, some of the other benefits as well is if once you open the hood, like, like any, like you're opening, a, you know, you're opening an engine at a mechanic, right? And you're kind of looking around, uh, it gives someone like Arctic Leaf that opportunity to work on, you know, code cleanup, site speed optimization, which factors into SEO. Um, so while it can be a little bit more costly up front, um, there are other benefits and pros to that approach. Um, but again, you know, you know, definitely reach out to, to either of us or all three of us on this call. And we can have definitely support any kind of questions and comments or concerns. Uh, I will always definitely refer saying we are not lawyers and we are not, we are not specialists. Um, so there are specialists out there. Uh, we definitely recommend that you consult with your legal counsel and make sure that um, the approach that you're taking does give you the appropriate protection um, going forward. Now, a lot of times, again, kind of, uh, Ellie, you said it's the uh, the spray or pray approach, right? I, I think you said that, right? I love that, by the way. I'm definitely going to use that. Uh, and, um, Gamify it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gamification on accessibility. So, um, which, by the way, I really dislike that word because I came from the gaming space, and every time I would talk, to oh, them, yeah. how do I gamify like Bitcoin into like? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, like, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gamifying blockchain on end of everything in your yeah game. exactly it's like yeah. how do I like, yeah how do I mine cryptocurrency <laughs> while I'm driving in an Uber and then I'm also buying on something oh my gosh like Josh do you have a solution for it or not <laughs> so um, I'm just joking sorry yeah so it's uh, again so I just think there's a lot of different approaches um, you know you can do you know initial scans too so you can get it kind of good out of the box. Um, you know, if you actually go to the landing page that we put together for this uh, for this um, on tap series, there's actually this really really cool widget that uh, Access we put together, and you can just put in your URL, and it'll actually kind of give you like a a quick little report on on some of the items that they quickly find in, on the scan and things like that. So, um, cool. So we're actually kind of coming up at uh, about 40 minutes in. I know we started a few minutes late, but I want to make sure there's enough time for Q and A. Um, and uh, so there's a couple of questions. So the first question from uh, Amadeep is uh, just installing accessibility. Will it save us from litigation? So I'm going to refer to Ellie, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say that you should still check with your legal counsel, regardless <laughs> um, what, whatever Ellie is about to say. So I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full disclosure uh, disclaimer for everybody over here. So in uh, we do not indemnify nor insure anybody. Uh, from litigation in our wonderful country uh, filled with freedom. Of course, I'm from the U.S. I was born and raised there. I'm not there now, but I still associate with it being my home. 
Um, in the US, everybody and anybody can sue you for anything at any time. So while we don't again indemnify nor insure you, we still have a very robust way in which has helped over 4,500 customers at this point um, out of litigation or have curbed those settlement fees by far. Um, the, I'll, I'll give you some notice that um, from our 100,000 customers, we currently work with the most bona fide institutions in the entire world uh, with, the, with hundreds of law firms and uh, Miami State Attorney's Office, the New York and Florida Bar, um, over 100 top global brands. I'm sure that many of you, uh, of course, know. You can cite them on our site and see them there and, and check them out. Um, but to answer the question, um, we have helped thousands of customers out. You need to make a reasonable attempt to make your website accessible. It is better than doing nothing about it, of course. It doesn't help people with disabilities by not doing anything about it as well. Uh, so coming up with an initial plan and ensuring that you're doing your best uh, to keep up with the level of accessibility, and that is by way of accessibility. Um, we were talking about the manual supplemental approach. So with Arctic Leaf, um, going ahead and doing that as well. So testing with accessibility on the site, um, of course, would be the best way of going about it to see if there's any limitations that are found there um, and then manually fixing them, which will, of course, help our system and help you as the customers out there looking for a more robust level of accessibility if in case, in case there are limitations uh, within our solution itself. Um, so I, I hope that that kind of answers the question. Um, we definitely help you and support you in, in litigation as we have those thousands as well. Uh, but at the same time, you always must ensure that your level of accessibility is up to par. Um, so the supplemental approach would be the best way to uh, kind of cap. I'm going to I'm going to kind of defer also this to, to Evan and kind of hear his thoughts from a big commerce perspective and and what he's seen in the past. Obviously, he showed a great case study, um, but he's you know been around the block a number of times. He's worked with a lot of different merchants and brands that have gone down this route before. So I'm curious to hear his thoughts uh, kind of fall in that same question. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, I'll just kind of tack back on to what you said initially, Josh. I think, you know, usually when over my years and years and years, I feel like a dinosaur here um, at Big Commerce, but, uh, you know, it's obviously with the domino thing and the spiral that happened, um, it's become so hyper relevant that, you know, in the last few years, we're seeing it all over the place. And unfortunately, as Eli kind of mentioned, as soon as there's an opportunity like that market, um, in the great you know, United States, people are going to sue you for whatever they can, um, and they're going to take advantage of that. And that's definitely been happening. And you know, I think um, what was seemed to be once reserved a few years ago for the dominoes of the world, the Target, uh, Walmart even you know, had a, a big case, a, a bunch of them, is now just coming further and further downstream because they've ran the gamut of those, right? And so um, you know, my, my, my stance is that you know, these laws are also relatively new. And so, and they're, I won't say they're dynamic, but there's always risk of gray area and change, which what these guys coming after you are going to do, they're going to try to find the gray area, right? So um, why, why big commerce is doing everything it can to get you as compliant out of the box, which I think we've done and done really successfully and help a lot of merchants. And while accessibility also is doing really great things to make sure that customers are safe, um, you know, there's, there's still always a chance that something could happen. And so I think just uh, going back to your point, Josh, that, you know, consulting with your legal uh, team or firm or outside counsel um, is important uh, during this process just to make sure. And I think, you know, a key thing that people, I see people forgetting during this process is that, you know, they, they seem to, it's a set or forget type thing. And that's unfortunately just not what it is. Um, you can't just say I'm complying out of the box and then, um, you know, 12 months later, be like, well, I did that 12 months ago. It's fine. You, it's kind of an ongoing process to make sure that you're remaining compliant, whether that's, you know, doing a monthly scan or quarterly or audit or whatever that may be. Um, so th those are some of the things that I've seen is just, you know, I think there's a lack of understanding of, um, you know, not only what needs to be done up front on your site, but what needs to be done ongoing. And the fact that no matter here you're listening to, whether it's us at Big Commerce or Eli Accessibility or Arctic Leaf, there's always a legal counsel that needs to be involved when we're talking about, you know, ADA and accessibility. So that's my my best advice as, as you go along in your journey. It's, you Good know, e-commerce. Yeah, it is, it is great advice. Um, and I've, I've, you know, I've had the pleasure to work with Evan 
um, for a number of years now over Big Commerce and, and being able to see the progression of where this has all come from and, and the way they've been able to react to the market, I think is really amazing. Uh, and then you tie in a great part of like accessibility and, and then you have this really, really great uh, outcome. Uh, and, you know, just, just like to, to kind of mimic what Evan was saying is like your store is, is a, you know, your e-commerce store is a living, breathing thing, right? You're, you, it's not, you know, the set it and forget it, which we've all seen the wow, sham wow commercials and all of those other things, right? I'm giving a uh, shout out to sham wow. But, uh, um, you know, the idea there is that it's this constant evolution, right? You know, the market's changed, you know, something like COVID fast tracked e-commerce 10 years inside of 10 months. That's my saying. Some other people say three. Um, I, I think it sounds much better. <laughs> so, um, but, but really like we've seen so it's been, it's just evolved so much in the last year that if, if you're thinking that, okay, I'm going to work on ADA compliance or web accessibility today, and then you're not going to revisit it for another 12 months, it's, I, I, I highly recommend you reevaluate your e-commerce strategy. So, um, and that just goes in, 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 and that ties into your user experience. You're making sure your brand voice is up to speed. Are you investing in email marketing? Are you investing in different channels, right? This is all, this is just another piece to running your e-commerce store. Uh, and, you know, our objective here today was to provide some guidance and some insight into kind of where it all came from uh, and then what you can do to kind of protect your brand uh, going forward. Um, so I know we got a few more questions. We'll try to get it in under the wire here. Um, so most was of it my history of lesson that threw it off, wasn't it? Sorry. <laughs> You're Israeli, man. You just love to talk. So that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope oh, we're like, getting this recorded. Go ahead. Yes, yes, it is. Um, so most of the law firms just do the scan for makes available tools. Do these tools detect accessible scripts? Accessibility scripts, sorry. So, um, most of them do not. Basically, there are, so our solution is a session-based tool. And that essentially means that it lives on the user's browser side. And it is superficially um, manipulating the, uh, your source code, essentially. Um, and what these, these automatic testing tools, essentially what they do is once you put in your domain name, they will scalp, they, they'll essentially scour your code and the static code. So if there was any accessibility changes that were being made to the code, uh, then it will find a lot of those issues. A lot of the issues are not found because just a level of efficacy or efficiency that the solution itself has. So the differences between let's say Wave or Google Lighthouse or others that are out there, you're gonna see distinguishable differences between those. And that usually means that one is necessarily uh, better in one aspect than the others or et cetera. Um, to answer your question, because of the variability of options that our solution provides, it will not test all of those variations. And so that's why we actually came out with Accessibility's ACE auditing tool um, is to count for those variation or adjustments, if you will. And I'll give you an example. Uh, color contrast ratios, if you have a black background and charcoal gray um, you know, typography, that even if it's large for somebody with low visual impairments, cataracts, uh, glaucoma, whatever it may be, uh, they won't be able to see that. And the reason why you have color contrast ratio uh, that's an acceptable color contrast ratio requirement um, is because of that factor specifically. So our solution, you get to choose and adjust based on the session that's specific to that session and where those automatic testing tools will scour your static source, source code Ours is done all on the fly and on the session on the user's browser side. So it will not account for all of those color contrast ratio adjustments that our solution has. I hope that wasn't too long winded, uh, but it does for some and it does not for most others. Okay. Okay. No, that, that was really great. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, I know we're kind of wrapping up here. So I'll just do the last one here. Um, and it says, um, Let's say a merchant installed Accessibility, but uh, you still receive a litigation from a, a litigation letter from a law firm. What are the next steps? Aha. Uh -huh. So first and foremost, we would go into the litigation support package. Uh, we would provide you with all those things that I, I mentioned there before. The timeline is uh, from the moment that our R&D department and upper management and legal receive um, all of the information regarding the claim, date of issuance, et cetera, who the point of contact is. Um, essentially, we'll start compiling the master Excel spreadsheet to show the plaintiffs 
uh, complaints line by line item and then our rebuttal for each one of those items. Um, and then we'll provide the accessibility audits for both our ACE auditing tool and of course a third party. You also have the invoice. So the date that you actually started becoming accessible is a huge thing uh, because it shows when you started actually doing this um, or continued or started your efforts, I should say, about accessibility. Um, and it shows the date of issuance. So that way you can track back when the day that they actually started trying to make their website accessible under the WCAG guidelines. Um, and then of course, other further support like email templates and canned responses, apart from our uh, legal and R&D departments, uh, further service, if you will, that's all included within the price and package uh, that you would buy you know, retail on our site. No, that, that was really great, super insightful. Um, so we're coming up pretty close here. So just want to start wrapping up and say thank you to Ellie and, uh, and Evan, and then also Nicole, who works really, really hard behind the scenes um, with the big commerce team and, and the accessibility team <clears throat> to, uh, to support. Um, so I just want to say thank you um, for all of that great insight. Uh, very, very helpful. And then kind of uh, as part of an on-tap tradition, we always do some form of uh, giveaway. So uh, if you complete the survey after our call, uh, you'll be entered to win a free website accessibility audit. Um, this is great because it comes out, we give you a full nice report as to the items that uh, could potentially cause issues. Uh, and then we also give you actionable items on how to accomplish and, and complete um, um, those errors and omissions. So definitely um, complete the survey. It also gives us good insight as to uh, was this a beneficial, you know, did, did you learn something? Uh, is this something that you want us to, you know, continue to work on? And uh, I mean, I, I learned a heck of a lot today. So, um, and I've been kind of doing this for, for quite a while. So I just want to say thank you to everyone uh, of all their, you know, their, their, their time and effort into this, uh, into this, uh, this on tap series. Um, I'll kind of open the floor to just Evan and Ellie to kind of wrap up and give their final thoughts and then we'll, uh, we'll have a salute. Cool. Nicole, Josh, I mean, if I may jump in here, Evan, um, I, yeah, throughout the entire process, it's been so awesome. Nicole, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a cheerleader, number one fan over here, Josh, you got a good one over here. Um, but yeah, for putting this together, it's been really, really awesome. And I hope to, to learn from it as well. So that feedback will also be beneficial to me uh, to know when to be more quiet and also when to be a, a little bit louder. So um, I'd love to get everybody's feedback if there is any over there. And really, thank you so much for inviting us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Ellie. Yeah, I, and I'd, I'd say just the same thing. I really appreciate Josh and Nicole for putting this, this on. And Eli, it was great working with you on this. And uh, Accessibility is an awesome partner. Arctic Leaf is an awesome partner. Um, so I'm super excited. Um, and feel free, you know, I, I can share my information. Um, if anybody has any additional questions that's more relevant to the BigCommerce platform, what we're doing around compliance, feel free to send it to me. Uh, always happy to answer or, or help out or, or find somebody that can. Um, so just wanted to leave that out there, but I really appreciate everybody joining today and, and hopefully you learned something. Yeah. Appreciate Thanks, it. Evan. Really nice meeting yeah. you, man. Really. Yeah. 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 And if there's any questions, please feel free to reach out to any one of us. Um, we'll be obviously sending out the survey. Uh, if there's any additional questions, send those in. We'll obviously do our best to answer them and get back to you. Um, but we're all pretty personal individuals. <laughs> so uh, please feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear from you. And if we can help in any way, we're, we're happy to do so. Without further ado, salute everyone. Thank you for your time. I shouldn't have got a white cup on a, on a virtual box. <laughs> well, but, uh, how did you do that? No. <laughs> right, it's magic. So um, yeah, um, will there be their contact information? So yeah, you can just email like info at arcticleaf.ca. Um, you can reach out to uh, to to Nicole. Um, yeah, we will be sharing the recording, um, so everyone that uh, registered or attended will receive the recording. And any questions that weren't answered, we'll be sure to post those as well with the answers and all contact info for everybody to have. Yeah. Io. Oh my gosh. Yeah, my apologies. <laughs> it's Monday so, again, isn't it? I was Passover <laughs> over the weekend, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You only have to do one day. So oh my uh, God. without yeah. further ado, thank you everyone for your time. Thank today. you. Really appreciate it. Evan, Eli, really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for all of your all right, help. Guys. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, thank guys. You. Bye, guys. Bye.